I am back. I've been gone since last Wednesday, I think. I know I promised to come on here for 30 days and tell you stories. So yeah, I had to take a break because I had to take a last minute trip to San Francisco last weekend and I've been working on a new video and there's one person watching, yay. Um, yeah, so let me know who you are so I can say hi. I see three of you now. Um, I was just saying, hi, Danette. Good morning. Where do you live, Danette, that it's morning? It's six o'clock here. Hi, Lucinda. Hey, Allison. Okay, so, hey, Teresa. Um, I know I've been gone since, hey, Jenny. Um, I've been gone since, like, last Wednesday or something. It's because um, Wednesday night I decided at the last minute to fly to San Francisco and I had to finish the video that I was editing with Zeb and Jamie, hey Tammy, in order to get that done before I jumped on a plane Friday morning and so I was just totally consumed in editing the video. And if you haven't seen the video, it's a great video. It's with Zeb and Jamie Ray of Jamie Ray Vintage. They came over to my house. They came all the way here from... Yay! They came all the way here from Utah and Zeb built these amazing corbels for me and we worked on them together and I told you their stories. So if you have not seen the video, please go check it out. Um, yeah, it's really good. And now, like before when I used to post the link to my videos here on Facebook, Facebook would show it to like 30,000 of people. And now maybe a couple thousand out of my 24,000 followers get to see it. So make sure you check out the video. I'll put it in this link, but if you scroll down a few, you'll see the link to the video down there. So that's why I didn't come on live last week and then I was gone over the weekend and um, I have not gone live earlier this week because I've been totally buried in getting ready for a boot camp. It's a lot of work. And I'm working on a new video, which I'm really excited about. If you saw the teaser, it's um, I saw this chair at Anthropology that cost $1,500. It's like this shibori indigo dye amazing chair. And I said to myself, I wonder if I can make that. And so I've been working on that. It looks really cool. And hopefully I'll have that done by this weekend. Um, but I wanted to come on here with another story. Hey, Jen. Um, I want to tell you about um, something that's been on my mind lately. And that is critical comments. And yay for boot camp. Yes, I'm very excited for boot camp. Okay, I'm going to try not to read the comments because I get... Um, sidetracked and then at the end I'll go back and I'll respond to your comments. So um, I've been thinking about like if you paint furniture like me and you've ever posted anything on Facebook I'm sure that you have run across someone who says you know especially if you're painting vintage furniture someone who says you shouldn't paint that you ruin that piece of furniture it's it's old it's precious and it's blasphemous to paint old vintage furniture. I've had my share of comments like that, um, especially when my projects get shared to bigger pages. Like sometimes my projects will get shared to Home Talk, which has millions of people. And one time I like literally got like blasted by like, like 30 people just telling me that I ruined it and it was ugly and it was horrible and I should be ashamed of myself for painting. And it was, it was one of the best, like I was so proud of that piece. I thought it was so pretty. And here these people are just like telling me that, you know, I should pretty much be jailed and like hung out to dry for painting furniture. Um, in particular, vintage furniture. And like, if I wanted to paint something, then paint something from Ikea or paint something that, you know, on paint on furniture that isn't worth anything. And like, I have always felt like, would you say that to an artist? Like, would you tell them, oh, you know, that's a beautiful piece of art, but you shouldn't ruin that gorgeous canvas. You know, you should paint on scrap paper. Like, that's how it made me feel. Um, and that's been going on for a long time and I'm kind of used to it. But something happened in my store that, well, two things happened this week that kind of like put me in the other person's shoes. 
And so the first thing that happened was I have these old, beautiful prom dresses from the 1950s, and I've had them dis on display in my store. One a customer brought in, it was a handmade, gorgeous dress in perfect condition, but so fragile because they're made out of tulle and old, like, organza and the seams are really fragile because they're very old and like they just do not make dresses like this they look like cakes they're amazing and then I got a few off of eBay and I paid a lot for them and so I would you know I had like $250 per dress and nobody ever bought them because they're super tiny like no one these days people were much smaller so you couldn't really fit into a dress like literally you'd have to be a hundred pounds to fit into these dresses and they were just beautiful like pieces of art that that made my store gorgeous and everyone would comment on them I would never let anyone try them on because I didn't want them to rip the seams and I've had them in my shop for I don't know five or six years maybe longer and they were just kind of there to add to the atmosphere but um, nobody ever wanted to pay the price that I was asking for them and so recently we remodeled the store and we need more space and so I told my manager, post those three dresses on Craigslist Marketplace, just all three of them for a hundred bucks. I just need to get them out of the store. You know, they're, we've had them in here long enough and I need to let them go to somebody else who will appreciate them. So a woman comes into the store, like last, I think it's been about three weeks now. And she came in, she saw the ad, she was interested in getting one of the dresses and we had them like three for a hundred dollars, which was a total bargain. And then she starts to tell me that she's gonna buy one of the dresses for her daughter who's going to prom. And she's not sure which one will fit her. And she shows me a picture of her daughter and I'm not sure that any of them will fit her because like I said, they're really small. And she, she starts telling, you know, and I said, well, you know, they're really fragile. And I like, immediately I got upset because I'm like, I didn't want some teenager like wearing it to prom because I knew it would be trashed by the end of the night and to me they were like these precious works of art that I loved and I like was hoping that someone would buy them and like display them you know maybe in their bedroom against a beautiful armoire they were just gorgeous gorgeous like I don't know if you follow Ray. so she starts telling me that her teenage daughter is gonna wear them and then you know I said well they're really fragile and she says oh I don't you know I don't care if they're ruined by the end of the night I just want her to have fun and she ended up buying all three of them because she didn't know which one and she's like oh for a hundred bucks it doesn't really matter I'll just take all three of them for the three for a hundred dollars and I I was trying to talk her out of buying them because all of a sudden I just felt like Ugh. She doesn't appreciate them. She doesn't deserve to have them. And I just, I ended up having to go to my manager and say, would you please ring her up? Because I'm having second thoughts about selling these. I, you know, I knew I, like I could feel my bad attitude rising up in me and I just had to let it go and, and just, you know, let her buy the dresses. I put them up for sale and, you know, just not let my personal feelings get in the way. And so, <laughs> My manager, Melissa, sold her the dresses and she was a very sweet lady, returning customer. And I was very smart to like pull myself out of the equation because I was getting pissy about it. Um, but then after that, I started thinking, you know, isn't that the same as the people who criticize me for painting furniture? It's like, I, you know, I felt that the dresses would get ruined if they like were put on a teenage girl and worn at the prom, you know, to me, they were these precious things that should just be, you know, on display. And that's kind of the way the people who think you shouldn't paint vintage furniture think. And so I just kind of said, hmm, well, that's like, you know, that's kind of how those people must feel when they criticize my painted furniture. And then earlier this week, there's a beautiful house right next door to me. It's old, it's from, it was, it was old. It was from the 1920s. There was a giant jacaranda tree out in front of it. And this neighborhood that I live in is like, I live in a, like an 
urban industrial California neighborhood, lots of track homes, but there's a few streets, like this little pocket of area that's like going back in time. And that's really, really rare for California. If you live somewhere else, you know, when I've traveled, I see lots and lots of old cottages, but in California, they're, they're very rare. And so I live in this amazing street that's up at the top of the hill and you can see the ocean from here. And it's, there's a lot of old homes on the street and like it's tree lined and it's gorgeous. And you just like, you turn out of like Trader Joe's is five minutes from here, but I come up my street and I turn and I just feel like I'm like driving onto a movie set. And I have this, this um, 400 square foot like studio apartment above a garage and a beautiful ocean view and on either side of me and across the street from me are old houses and they're amazing and the house right right over there behind me um, a young couple bought it and <clears throat> they tore it down on Monday and I knew what was gonna happen and I tried to see if I could get some of the salvage from the old house and that didn't work out and um, Monday morning I woke up and I was on my way to the gym and the big cranes and bulldozers were coming in and the first thing they did was take out the gorgeous jacaranda tree that was just like blooming like just over blooming with beautiful purple flowers so that was the first thing to go and that like broke my heart and then when I got back from the gym the house was just smithereens and it bummed me out all day long because it was so pretty and I like thought about posting a picture of the rubble and I'm like, that's not being a good neighbor. And you know, they, they bought the house, it's their property and they have a right to tear it down. I know Jamie, it was a gorgeous house. But again, I felt like the same way that I felt with the prom dresses. And I thought again about the people who criticize me for painting furniture and I'm like, well, that's interesting. That's, you know, that's just, again, like putting yourself in someone else's shoes. And, you know, I, I have, they, it's their property. They bought the house and the house was actually vacant for a long time. And now they're gonna build a new house and they have every right to, to do what they wanna do. And I'm sure they have their reasons that I know nothing about. But um, it just got me thinking about the critical comments that I've gotten and um, thinking about someone else's perspective and I've been thinking a lot about it this week and this is the conclusion that I've come to everyone has a right to their opinion and here's another thing okay so for six years I've been on YouTube and I've been on Facebook about that long and for those entire six years all, everything that I post is my DIY videos or the things that I've painted and transformed. Never once have I given an opinion about anything. I don't, you know, it's just strictly DIY. And I, I leave my opinions out of things. But since I've started these Facebook Live story times, especially the one about when I went to the craft fair and I confronted the woman who was copying my work, all of a sudden, I'm getting like, I, not that much criticism, but I, I'm getting like regular critical comments, people telling me that I had no right to do that and blah, 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 blah. And some people are just like downright nasty. Like never in six years have I ever had to ban anyone from my Facebook page. But since I started these story time videos, I've banned about six people because they're just rude. And like, I, I think about that too and I think, you know, God forbid, like there's two sides to it, right? Do we want to live in a world where we can no longer express our opinion? Like with all of the politics that are going on on Facebook and the fighting that you see and the opinions and people just going at it and on YouTube, it's even worse. And it's like, I don't want to live in a world where we can't express our opinion, but we should be able to do it with respect. And so if you leave a comment on here and it, it's not my opinion, you know, that's, that's fine as long as you do it respectfully and you're not attacking me. And that's what I would like to see. And that brings up another um, interesting thing. I saw a Facebook Live video by um, some other gal last week and there was like a big um, 
people were talking about it, and I can't even remember her name. Um, but she's an amazing painter, and she does this powder coat furniture technique, and it's absolutely gorgeous and stunning. And she went on her Facebook page, and she had an opinion about chalk paint. And she was saying that it, she didn't think it was professional and that you couldn't get a certain look that, you know, that you needed to use um, a different kind of paint. I'm not even sure what kind of paint she uses. Now, I did not agree with every, Amy Mitchell. Thank you, Jamie. I did not agree with many of the things she said. But as I was watching her video, because she said it in text and then apparently she got a whole bunch of flack and then she came back and she did a Facebook Live and she read her comment verbatim and addressed it. And I could tell when she was reading it that she was 100% passionate and totally believed in what she was saying. And I was like, yes, girl, you know, state your opinion. Like, we live in a world where we have to be so politically correct. And I wasn't personally offended by it, even though she was saying chalk paint isn't professional and you can't use chalk paint, chalk type paints for this or that. And she had opinions that definitely I did not agree with. I was cheering her on for saying her opinion. And I have mine, and maybe someday I'll come on and talk about that. But I think that we should be able to say what we think and just, like, it, it was not offensive to me. I, I could see that she was sincere and she was honest and she was passionate. And I think we should... It would be a great thing if we could live in a world where we can talk about our opinions and not get like blasted for them and totally disrespected for them. You know, I, I respect her work. And so that, that just got me thinking about all the people who don't think I should paint vintage furniture. And it's like, if they don't think I should paint vintage furniture, fine. You know, I totally respect that. It's just say it in a way. Let's let's try and talk to each other in a way that is respectful and kind and like we don't want to be in a world where everyone has the same freaking opinion, do we? So that is that is what I learned in the last month in my own experience with the prom dresses and the house next door and um, the other issue with um, Jamie, tell me her name again. I'm sorry. Um, that different different opinions. So um, let me. So I am going to ask you to let me know what you think in the comment section. Tell me your opinions. I want to hear them. Just say them respectfully. And I will be back tomorrow with another story time. Thanks for watching.